Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward, and I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Revelation chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, so he's on the earth, having the key of the bottomless pit. Somewhere in this earth there's, there's a door to the bottomless pit. And great chain in his hand. So what do you see most people? They got in their hand a key chain with a key. King James Bible. And he laid hold on the dragon, this angel, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. So this dragon, this serpent, the devil and Satan, this sounds like that creature in Job that's not an elephant or a crocodile that can drink up the whole river of Jordan. And cast him into the bottomless pit, the angel, and shut him up and set a seal upon him. That's kind of interesting because they set it seal upon the grave of Jesus and they're setting a seal upon the tomb of, of Satan that he should deceive the nations no more comma not a period till the thousand years should be fulfilled now that's a note he's not going to deceive anybody for a thousand years until and after that he must be loosed a little season what's a little season we'll see in a moment and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. So there are thrones on this earth now. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. We've seen them, they're under the throne. For the word of God. So their purpose of losing their heads is for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark on their foreheads or in their hands. So these are not people who, who died during the church age for the word of God. These are people after the three and a half years, the great tribulation period, when that image is set up and the mark is established. They lost their heads for the word of God and they did not receive that mark. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. There's a lot of reigning to be done in the millennium. Here are these people that died for the word of God and died for not receiving that mark. We as Christians will have the right to reign. Christ will reign. David the Prince. But the rest of the dead lived not unto the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests. Priests and kings are reigning. Judges and kings of God and of Christ. And they shall reign with him a thousand years. So, these people, they're not damned. They're not going to suffer the second death. And it looks like possibly not only do they get to reign in the millennium and be in the millennium, it looks like they'll be in the eternity too. And when the thousand years were expired, That's a short thousand years. 
between the period between one verse and another. Okay, now it's come on, God, give us twenty verse six and a half, six point seventy five, six point eighty five. Tell us, Lord. We got the Old Testament for that. And when the thousand years are expired, go on. Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. He's been putting Christians in prisons all these years. And we read that in one of the churches. He shall put you ten days in prison. Well, God allows an angel to put him in prison. For a thousand years. And shall go out to deceive the nation. See, he's going to deceive. Which are in the four corners of the earth. We talked about that before. North, east, south, west. Gog and Magog. Now, what is Gog and Magog? Gog and Magog. But don't they represent somebody? I don't know. Do you realize land names are changing often? You're going to see it probably down south. The Lord tarries. You're going to find places like Jeffers. You know, all the name of all the the rebels. Are going to lose their names because they're the South, the, the America's trying to get rid of their history, and they if they get rid of the names, well, they're going to give them new names. At one point in time, we're in Daytona Beach. Well, Daytona Beach was known for some Indian name. I guarantee you. Their places in Connecticut used to be named Mohegan. Names change. To gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now look at that. We just had a millennial reign of Christ. Peace on earth. The only thing that, that the curse is not removed is the serpents. They still eat uh, dust and they still crawl on their belly. Everything else, the curse has been removed. Okay? There is Jesus Christ. There is David. There is the apostles. There are the Christians. There are these people that did not receive the mark and lost their head. I don't know if God, the 4 and 24 elders and the cherubims are going to be there. But here is also an innumerable company of angels. Righteousness is reigning. And as soon as that thousand years is up, the deceiver is let go. And he rounds up an army that you cannot number. Now, isn't that terrifying? That he is able to get such an army. And I've had people, be, I'm not, I don't know how long it's been. But there used to be people in my public ministry who come up, well, just show me God, show me this Jesus, and I'll believe. They used to say that. They don't say it no more. A thousand years with God and Jesus Christ, and he still, have you ever, ever counted the sand on, this, on the Mediterranean Sea? That's how the Bible describes the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So everything is going to be wonderful in the millennium, but there are still people there who will be angry with Jesus Christ. And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. That's us. That's Jerusalem. And the beloved city, Jerusalem. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. There's your nuclear war right there. You see it? Revelation 20, verse 9. What are all these war movies been showing you about the new nuclear age of World War III? Don't they all get consumed in their eye sockets? Don't they all get burned up? Don't all the houses burn? That's exactly it. There's your nuclear war. And it's not nuclear, it's God saying, you're gone. 
He doesn't. They start the march, and God says, "Nahab and Abihu, right there. There they are." Now, can you imagine these guys waking up in hell? What the heck just happened? We were just on fire burning. Now we're in hell. Weren't we just following Satan? Didn't he tell us to deceive and say he's going to deceive those nations? Didn't he just tell us we're going to win, we're going to fight against God, and we're going to get that victory? Well, why are we in hell? And how did it happen? That was quick. So let me tell you something about hell and the lake of fire. Now here is amazing. Get this. Get this. Revelation 20. After the millennium, verse 8, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. We can't count that, can we? And this one small verse of the Bible, 66 verses of the Bible, we are in the last book of the Bible. An unnumerable amount of people as the sand of the sea are now in hell. And we're not even going back to the children of Adam. There's a lot of people in hell. And you can't count them. I want you to get that. Because what we're going to do a little bit further in this chapter, you're going to see something. And if you were to think that the lines at Walmart are long, Wait till you come up to the line that we're going to look at next. And there's definitely no 20 sins or less. Watch this. And the devil, that deceived them. He had to tell them we're going to win. Else why, would they, why would they take post? Was cast in a lake of fire and brimstone. Now, watch this. This is interesting. Uh... Look at verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in them, and death and hell delivered the dead which were in them. When Satan's cast in like a fire, there are people still in hell. Hell is still there. He gets a group of people, they're, they're burnt up, they are, they are sent off into hell. Satan is cast in the lake of fire and brimstone. He is thrown right into the lake where the beast and the false prophet are. Now, I got, I'm not going to teach this as doctrine. I've got the notes. I need to run through them. I need to go after them. I need to study them. But if God takes Satan at this point and throws him right into the lake of fire, up and over the judgment, I mean the great white throne judgment, I am thinking that Satan is not going to appear before God, the great white throne judgment, and he's not going to bow the knee and say, I pronounce you as Lord. He's bypassed the great white throne judgment. He is where they end up after the great white throne judgment. And if you study those cherubims, and you look at their legs, it looks like it's impossible for them to bend. Everybody say, well, Satan's going to bow the knee before Jesus and proclaim. I don't think he's going to do that. God throws him right into the lake of fire along with the Antichrist and the beast. So before we even get the rest of Revelation 20, there is the lake of fire. It has begun. And there's three beings in there right now. Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. That's it right now. There'll be people start joining them. I don't think, but just what we read now, I don't think they appear before God, the great white throne judgment. That's a possibility. And if you can prove me otherwise, send me emails. I want to know. I want the proof. Don't tell me what you think. Show me the scripture. I want to see if I'm wrong. And I'll confess it. Okay, now. Where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Day and night. 
And I saw the great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was no place found for them. The sun and moon are gone. Time is gone. While Satan's thrown into the lake of fire, there's still a little bit of day and time left. And we read a, we read a verse back here in Revelation. Let's see if I can find my notes real quick. Uh, back here we read. Oh, where is it? In chapter 10, verse 6. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created the heavens and the things therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things that are therein, that sh there should be time no longer. The clock has stopped. Verse 11. There are no more wristwatches. There's no more date calendars. There's no more, I'll see you in an hour. There's no more, when we've been there for 10,000 years. No. Time has stopped. We are now in the eternity. We are in the eternity future. There was eternity uh, uh, a past. Until God made the moon, the sun, and the stars, and made seasons. You find that in uh, Genesis 1. Time has now stopped. Thank God. Because if, if there is a multitude of people just from verse number 8 that are going to be judged, wouldn't you know how long that line would be going all the way back to Adam's children? No time at all. And the heaven and earth fled away. Bye bye earth. Bye bye earth. Bye bye heaven. Goodbye mother earth. She has been so wicked with her people and mankind and the blood and the deaths and the sins. The earth cannot even stand to be near God when he shows up. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it. From who the face of the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. The solar system. Peter says it burns up as fervent heat. So if you want to say Mother Earth, you're doing it recklessly because it's not going to happen. And I saw the dead, small and great. The guy that lived underneath the bridge and had no home. To the one that, you know, the executive CEO mansions. Stand before God. Will the Jehovah Witnesses be amazed that they'll be standing before Jesus? Eh. Wait a minute. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Heaven and earth are fled away. What are they standing on? There's no new Jerusalem. There's no new earth. There's no new heaven. What are they standing on? They're just standing in outer space. All right, let me ask you a question. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. There's no heaven. There's no earth. This defies gravity. What is gravity? It's God holding us down. Because when God is done with these people, if they're not found, in the, he's going to let them go and fall. You know the Bible. When they look down, they don't see nothing. And they're naked as anything. They have no wallets, money, credit cards, cars, or anything. And they're standing before God. So what's Amos say? Prepare to meet thy God. Now imagine an atheist, verse 12. Imagine a Roman Catholic walking up to God and seeing that he's a male. And not married. At this moment of no time, you know you're in trouble. 
and no church member will be here, except for the judge people. The Bible says, do you not know you shall judge angels? At this point, these people will come up before God. And they'll say, well, I never knew. All right. Call those street preachers up. Call those people that knocked on door. Call those people who pass out those gospel tracts. Bring that family member that sat you down to the table. Bring, bring the family that you were at the funeral, you are at the wedding, you are at the, the family so that they talked about. Bring them up, will you please? And we will condemn our families, our friends, our co-workers, and maybe even people that were in our church. Hey, I told you. And Ezekiel says, I won't have the blood of my finger. Now, if you didn't witness to your family, you didn't tell people about Jesus Christ. Let me show you. I didn't look forward to it. But what does it say? Um... Oh, where is it? We're coming up. We've got two more, two more verses left. Um, well, 21 or 22. Uh, trying to look quick here. Well, it's in 21 or 22. I know that. We've got two more chapters on it says, then shall our tears be wiped away. 21.4? 21, 21, I'm on the wrong page. That's why I couldn't find it. Alright, 21.4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That's us. You don't witness, you're going to be crying here. As you will go off into eternity with Jesus Christ. And they'll go off to eternity in hell. The people that you witnessed to. If they, didn't, if they did not listen to you. You're still going to weep. If your heart is loving for lost souls. You know at this point. There is no more hope. There is no more preaching. There is no more way for them to get saved. This is a time for a Christian to cry. Should be now while we're living. We should be shedding tears for the lost people. Now. The tears don't get wiped away in the next chapter, verse 4. Stand before God and the books were open. What books? And another book was open, which is the book of life. We know what that book is. If your name is in that book, you're saved. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Oh! God's keeping a record of every human being. God's occupation. Not only is he God Almighty, Creator and Savior, if you read Numbers and you read Chronicles, he's a great bookkeeper. And Jesus said, every idle word that a man shall speak, he shall give an account thereof. He is recording every single word that we say. That man will say. Christians will give an account in the judgment seat of Christ. The lost will give an account here. And the books will be open. As far as I know, our life. Oh, we didn't know. Are you kidding me? For three years, while you sold and bought produce, you heard the word of God every week. That man was as faithful as he could be faithful to be there and preach the word of God. Are you really killing me? Are you really serious that you didn't know? Would you like me to call that loud mouth back up here and tell you? Because I'll call him up. He's over there. We got to get account, people, that God is recording everything that we are doing. And we'll be found wanting. And the seed gave up the dead. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's go back to love again. 
The earth and the heaven are gone. What sea? That's got to be that universe up there where Satan and his beings are. The powers and principalities. This is where Satan's angels are going to be judged. And the Bible says, do you not know that we're going to judge those angels? An angel has seen God and Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit and heaven. I haven't. An angel can never be redeemed by the blood of Jesus, but I have been. I will, maybe me, not me. A Christian will walk up to an angel and say, I, you had it better than I had. And you still follow Satan. By the power invested in me by the Lord Jesus Christ, go to hell. Or the lake of fire. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. So, kind of Bible wise, hell is temporary. A man will come out of hell. Here it is, verse 13. And when they get out of hell, they're going to stand before God. Now, will they have any relief? I don't know. Will they still be in torments while standing before God? I don't know. But what if you're the Katuili Kukabili, the Dubili person that came out of hell, and you see Katuili Kukabili, the Dubili person get cast in the lake of fire, and you know there's no hope for you? Wouldn't that be torment enough and you know where you're going and you know that's the final state you know you rejected God and his son Jesus Christ and you know you'll be damned for all eternity and you know there's nothing you can do now as you get in your head man that guy was right that preached to me that guy that came to my door yeah he was correct yeah that preacher that I went for whatever reason I went yes he was right Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Oh, there's your works. God, I said 15,000 Hail Marys. Not good enough. Are you saying that's better than my son? God, I killed 2,000 infidels. Would have been better if that, if that bomb were looked, that last bomb I had, if it came out better, but. I tried. Not good enough. I, I want the blood of Jesus Christ. What? I want the blood of Jesus. I was told if I slain infidels, you were deceived. That's the wrong blood. I just didn't believe in God. Now, can, can, now, I can, can you picture an atheist right now? He said, oh, I just didn't believe in uh, God. Um... What is an atheist going to do at that moment? When he is looking face to face with a person he did not believe. This is the end. And their works are being recorded. Their prayers are being recorded. Their cutting their knees and cutting their flesh is being recorded. Their works. But let's put the works up against Jesus Christ. Are you saying you're better than Jesus Christ? And they may say yes. But what does the blood of Jesus Christ speak of? Sinlessness. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Everything you did did not take away the sin. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. That's interesting. God doesn't get rid of death and hell. He just throws it in the lake of fire. This is the second death. So we say, born once, die twice. That's biblical. That's a biblical statement. Born twice by the Spirit, John 3.3, 3, die once. That's a biblical, biblical statement. Uh, you, know, you can't see it here. Like you can't see the Trinity, but there's no Trinity in the Bible, but the Trinity represents the three members of the Godhead. 
We give it a word. You can't find the word rapture, but that dis that describes the church going up. It's in the Bible. You can't find purgatory. That's not in the Bible, and the illustration of purgatory is not in the Bible. And whosoever, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. When I start my messages Saturday morning, I start with John 3.16 to whosoever. If they do not believe on Jesus Christ and whosoever, this is them now. This whosoever is someone who doesn't have a chance no more and they're damned. In the church age. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, there's hope. If the books are open here and their name is in the book of life, I believe Nebuchadnezzar's name is going to be there. I believe naming name the, the one that had the leper is going to be there. You see, the judgment seat of Christ is for the church. The Old Testament saints have not been judged yet. And Daniel speaks about the resurrection of the just and the unjust. Here it is. And here we will see Old Testament saints walking up to God and everything. That, their salvation is by works of the law. And the coming Messiah. The tribulation saints, they are by the works of the law. And by the testimony of Jesus Christ. And if that name is found in the Lamb's Book of Life at the Great Right Throne Judgment, they don't get into the lake. Notice how it said death and hell. The graves are open, but not all the dead are in hell. And not all hell is in the grave where the Jehovah Witnesses get it mixed up to say, well, hell is the grave. No, it's not. I'm sorry, but I buried a grandmother, I buried a grandfather, uh, I, I buried a wife, I, I buried aunts, I buried uncles. I stood over that hole and I did not see no flames. It's not the same. There's a difference. Death and hell. There are Old Testament saints, there are tribulation saints that will come up to God, the great white throne judgment, and if their name's in that book, they go... New heavens or the new earth, depending, are they Jewish or are they Gentiles? I mean, we hear nothing about Rahab. Did she keep the law? And yet God protected her and saved her. Ruth, was she a Jew? No, but God protected and saved her. Are you going to tell me that after all that, God's going to throw Ruth into hell? Ruth is not going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. Where is she going to show up for a resurrection? Here. Step up. What's your name? Ruth the Moabite. Wow. You won't believe what Boaz said about you, girl. You won't believe what the, what the Holy Spirit said about you. Angel, give me the book of life. Yep. Ruth's name's in there. Come on in, Ruth. Cain, step up. Why didn't you offer that offering I told you? Why did you kill your brother? Book, that's book of life. Depart from me, you curse, in the everlasting lake of fire. Get out of here. Go jump in that lake. What's going to happen? Belshazzar, why didn't you listen to, 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 to Daniel? You never called him. Get out of here. Go we'll jump in the lake, buddy. Hannah, check up. Her name's in there. Let her in. These people are not going to be at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. That's for the church only. Now, watch. Go, let's go to Acts chapter 2. I think it's 2. I'll show you something that's interesting. Now, we know the graves were open when Jesus died. In Acts chapter 2, Peter says something that's remarkable. I think it's 2. Uh, 
229. You got to wonder what Peter you're saying. Men and brethren, Jewish people, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. We know who that is, right? Old Testament, correct? That he is both dead and buried. Not all the Old Testament saints went up when Jesus died on that cross and the grounds were open, according to the Holy Spirit, see Peter. David's going to stand in that line of great white stone, and we know he's going to be found safe. We know his name's in the book. So not everybody is going to be at the great white throne judgment is going off the lake of fire. And you know what's worse for an Old Testament Jew under the law? He's really not, he really doesn't know. Saul gives us an idea he might be there, but then again gives us an idea he might not be there. David and Solomon are the only Old Testament men that are given the sure mercies. He calls David. He says, David, that's, you know, you're fine. You're in. He says, Solomon, you're my son. And if you do wrong, I'm going to chastise you. Solomon is a type of, of a Christian. I can't get rid of you, but man, if you do wrong, I'm going to, I'm going to get you. So we come to the end of man. He's either going to be on God's side through the church, through the, through the judgment seat of Christ, and the bride of Christ. Or he's going to go into the, the new earth as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They obeyed the law and did what they were supposed to. Or there are Gentiles that are right and did what God told them to do. They're going to get the new heavens. Or they're going to be ones that rejected what God had to say and had no no payment of anything God has brought upon them. They're going to go off the lake of fire. You know how long that judgment of no time is going to be at the great white throne judgment? We read a bunch of people as the sand of the sea. I'll give you another number of people who will probably be at the great white throne judgment because they never listened to God. The entire population of the world minus eight with the world flood. Only eight people got saved. The rest of the world population, who knows how many it is. They will be found wanting at the great white throne judgment. Because they did not do what God told them to do. Else they would got in the ark. We know that Lot went and told the people of Sodom. He went to his family. The population of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities are going to be at the Great White Throne Judgment. And probably including his wife because she did not obey God. How the world's population up to Enos... When God records, then men started calling upon the name of the Lord. And what did Jesus say? Many will go the broad way, but few will go through the straight gate. Thank God time stops before the great white throne judgment. And man will be judged one by one by one. So get used to your long lines at the store because there's a longer line coming. So when you're in the lines, try to give somebody a gospel track. Try to witness as much as you can. So you can possibly get them out of the line of the Great White Stone Judgment. Wouldn't it be great if you were at the Great White Stone Judgment there? Wouldn't it be great if somebody come pat you on the back and say, I thank you gave me that track at that line at Walmart. Had you not given me that track, I would be in that line. And the tears don't stop until the next chapter.